everyone, this is Tierra Francois. I just want to talk more about my blog entry. I am both and I am proud. And this is for anyone who's one or more races who have felt like they don't know where they belong because they may have one side that's this color and feel like they have to be this way or one side of this color and feel like they have to be another way. So this is how I have overcome those thoughts and learning how to find myself, of course, with the grace of God. So when I was a young girl, I was very shy and sensitive. Now, my mother is African-American and my dad is Caucasian. My parents split up a few years after I was born. I stayed in the hood, High Park, Augusta, Georgia, to be exact, on the weekdays with my mom. Now, on the weekends, I went to my grandparents' house to spend time with my other side of the family, which was my white side. Now, on the weekdays, I was constantly picked on for being lighter than the black kids. White girl, white girl, white girl. That's what I would hear all the time. Now, on the weekends, I was constantly picked on for being darker than the white kids. I would hear the n-word they would call me the n-word a lot because i was darker can you imagine can you imagine the torment my younger self was going through in my mind what is so wrong i would think with being half black and half white what is so wrong with that why can't i be both it's not like i should i chose to be mixed with two races and not just two races but two of the most predominant races that have battled with each other way before my parents ever thought of being together that is the hand I was dealt, so I had to play it. Even though I did not fit in anywhere I went, I felt like an outcast. You know, I could be in a room full of people and I still felt alone. Alone because I don't know where I belong. Alone because my peers look at me like I'm a plague. Alone because I feel like no one understands what it's like to be biracial. I had nobody else around that was going through what I was going through. As I got older, it did not get much better. I had such low self-esteem, so I did not have the power to stand up for myself when I was being picked on. I did not know who I was, so I had no desire to choose my own path. I felt like I had to choose between being black or being white. If I dress or act white, then the blacks got something to say. If I dress or act black, the whites got something to say. If I had more white friends than black friends, I would be met with the statement, you know you black too, right? And vice versa. It was just a never ending cycle of criticism and judgment for something that I had no control over. So I decided to put a wall up. It can't hurt if I don't care, I said. As I became a young adult, still broken, still lost, still trying to find acceptance, I fell into drugs, alcohol, sex, and having my and hating myself more and more each day. I just didn't want to feel. I just didn't want to care. Really, I just didn't want to be me. That's why I did all of the things that I did. There came a point in my life when I had a near-death experience from doing too many drug at too many drugs at once that reality really hit me. I finally came to realization that no matter what I did, no matter how many drugs I took, no matter how many people I slept with, no matter how much I did, I could not change my ethnicity. It is what it is. It will not happen no matter what I did. I can embrace being biracial or continue to be a dead woman inside. That's the choice I had to make. I chose to embrace my differences. I chose to stop being the victim. I chose to have confidence and be proud of how I was made. Change all starts with a choice and a made up mind. To say that it was an easy road would lie. I would be lying. So I won't lie today or any day for that matter. It was hard as hell, you hear me? It was hard as hell to kill that old mindset, to silence those thoughts that said I had to be one race or the other or that I wasn't good enough. But slowly but surely, I started speaking that I am both black and white. I am both and I am proud. Even though I didn't feel good about being both, I still had to speak it until I started believing it. People around me may not like me or make racist remarks, but I am both and I am proud. I may not have been able to be friends or date someone who had racist parents, but I am both and I am proud. I may get dirty looks when people see me with my black beautiful husband, but baby, I am both and I am proud. I may get even more dirty looks and get laughed out when I start spitting my rhymes because I am a rapper too, a fire rapper actually. But best believe, I am both and I am proud. After I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior, I promise I ain't never been the same. He slowly but surely knocked all my walls down. I can love people who hate me. I can be kind when others want to be nasty. I can freely be me. Whew. I have my own style. I have my own brand. I'm in a lane all by myself. My skin complexion is beautiful. I'm beautiful in every way. I like rap and I like country. You understand what I'm saying? I am beautiful in every way and so are you. 
If you are biracial and struggling to find your way, know you are not alone. Jesus loves you and accepts you. And as I learned on this world, as long as Jesus and you accept you, that's all that matters. Be who you are. Do things that fulfill you and soothe your soul. Whatever you like to do that will have a positive effect in this world, do it. Don't settle for anyone or anything that does not see your value. See, always remember, God made us two races because we get to be the best of both worlds. We have the best of both worlds. Biracial is power. Biracial is love. Biracial is destroying stereotypes. Biracial is in a lane all by itself. We don't have to choose between either. We can be both and we can be proud. I hope that blessed someone. I love y'all.